What is up, everybody? My name is Hudson. Welcome to Monster Train. Monster Train First Class is available on the Nintendo Switch right now. It includes the full base game, Last Divinity DLC, and all the bonus cards, units, and gameplay features that have been added in all the free updates on the Steam version. Before we begin, let me announce that this episode is sponsored by Good Shepherd Entertainment, so thank you so much for choosing me to show off this awesome game. If you guys are interested in checking this out, go follow the link in the description to see it yourself. I have yet to play it on the Switch. I'm very excited about this, you guys. We get Monster Train on the go. For those of you who don't know what this game is, it's a roguelike card strategy game with a twist. Put your tactical skills to the ultimate test and experience a fresh take on deck building with not one but three battlegrounds to defend at the same time. Those three battlegrounds being the three levels of your train. Monster Train First Class delivers 25 difficulty levels to overcome, or like prestige modes. You can take on new daily challenges, hugely modify the game with mutators, compete in the global leaderboards, and also design your own unique challenges. Unlock new items, choose different routes and decks, face ever-changing enemies and bosses, build a unique deck with hundreds of upgradable cards, and a variety of monster clans with multiple levels to unlock. And there's also Hell Rush mode, which you can play with up to eight people. Cross play between PC, Xbox, and Switch. Without further ado, you guys, let's jump into this thing and see what's up. Of course, I've played this a bunch on my stream and I have everything unlocked on that version, not this version. So we're only gonna start with the first two clans here. I actually really like the Awoken clan. Let's do that. The Awoken clan really excels in defense cards and healing. But basically how this works is you choose one base clan and then you get a secondary clan. And throughout the run, you get to combine cards from those clans to try to make some really cool synergies. And also, like I said, there's up to six clans. So there's tons of unique combinations of different clans, primary and secondary. I mean, I've seen some really cool stuff. So the gist of the game here, we're trying to relight Hell's Fires and we have the last remaining higher shard that could do so we are riding on this train to try to get all the way down to the center of hell the frozen heart and reignite it we'll have to battle through wave after wave of enemies we start off with a few cards here we have our champion the sentient healing card damage card and then some train stewards which have some very low stats you can start off with bristling sentient which gives us spikes 10 and 20 extra health that means any enemy attacking me takes 10 damage back or the cultivating sentient which gives revenge cultivate one also draw plus one per turn revenge triggers when i'm damaged cultivate means it increases the damage and health of the friendly unit with the lowest health by the cultivate value i've never seen this cultivating one i think it might be new let's give it a shot Let's see what happens. Since it's revenge, we're going to want to put the sentient in front so it takes all the damage. And we're on to the first wave here. Each battle, you have an option for an additional reward if you take on the challenge. This one being enemies start with armor 10. I don't think we have that much attack, so let's just say no to it. All right, how do I look at these enemies? Here we go. Clergymen, they only have one health, but they start with plus four attack, which is from rage two. Decreases every turn, so if we don't attack them right away we wait for them later on maybe on the top floor once again four floors here three floors that we can defend and then the top floor that has our pyre let's put our sentience on the top floor let's stick a train steward behind the sentient and then damage torch one of these guys actually we have another another health another energy energy by the way in the lower left Energy cost of every card in the upper left. Next turn. All right. And the boss comes in. On the boss wave, the fights will just keep going until somebody on that floor dies first. Whether it be all my units or the boss. Nobody on the first floor, so it's not really anything to worry about. I'm gonna torch the guys in front of him. Run another train steward. Torch this guy. All right, bye, train stewards. You did well. Boss got to around half health there. Not bad. Let's not forget that we gain attack and health every single time the sentient takes damage. So our train steward in the back should be gaining damage and health once again. Let's see what happens. Yep. Had 10 damage and 13 health by the end there. This is this is a very interesting combination. After battle, you get to pick a few new cards. Let's try this sting. Apply five rage to friendly units. Let's try that. We've made it to the first level here. We get a choice of going to the left or going to the right. I'm liking the awoken stuff. I think we should stick with that. 
Let's get the banner. Animus of Will has three times three for attack. So if we're thinking about that, let's say that we put it behind our sentient. When our sentient takes damage, it's going to cultivate the Animus of Will, increasing that to three by three, four by three, five by three, six by three. And the amount of damage is going to be tripled of what it would be upgrading any other unit. So I think Animus of Will here is a good choice. Let's go to the Merchants of Seal. We have 150 gold. Let me upgrade anything here. You can't upgrade the sentient, your champion, which is a, a shame. Upgrade a unit with Endless. We could put Endless on our fledgling imp. Throw it in front, have it take some damage. It would die. It immediately comes right back into my hand next turn. Let's do that. Sure. Uh, now that I think about it, the fledgling is definitely the weakest of the friendly units. So the animus isn't going to be upgraded. The fledgling will be upgraded. Hmm. Didn't think about that one. Probably should not have gone with the imp then. Oh well. Next wave. Non-boss enemy units enter with spikes three. Um, that'd be a huge problem considering my animus only has three health. The first time it attacks anybody, it's dead. We have a conduit redirector. Other friendly units on the same floor gain a bonus of two spikes. You know, that's not good. Once again, my animus of will, which we want to stay alive, will die by attacking it. Let's put the sentient on the second floor and the animus behind it. Train steward on the bottom. Sure. Good luck, guys. Yeah, so they're taking damage by attacking. If I don't take out the creator of the spikes there, my animus will die as denoted by that X. But I can use this torch to kill her. There we go. I'm also going to use this torch to kill the dude for 50 more gold. Sting this guy. This guy in the top, he slipped through. But he doesn't have any attacks, so he won't be able to do anything to the pyre. He's just gonna get up there and die. I'm fine with that. I have to stay on top of torching these guys in the back somewhere. Animus doesn't die. Fledgling Imp. I did want to throw that in there, didn't I? Let's throw it in the bottom. So he gives rage 5 to enemy units, which is plus 10 damage. But decreases by 2 damage every turn. Boss is up next. We did have somebody slip through. That's kind of a problem. First things first, I'm gonna torch this the uh spikes dude apparently this boss automatically has two spikes that's gonna be really problematic for my build i'm gonna go ahead and sting the top lady before she gets up to my pyre we might be in trouble we might be in trouble here let's not forget that we have endless on our imp so we got it back but our <laughs> our animus is toast by putting that imp in there it gave my sentient damage with that rage so now the boss the steel slight is going to die all right, go to me. Their animus died immediately. Our imp! Our imp got him. Very nice. A lot of cards here that do healing. This one just restores 10 health immediately, but it deals damage to the front enemy unit equal to five times the amount of health healed. Let's go with Restoration Detonation. The Ascend a Unit card is incredibly useful. You can end up stacking floors with more units that would normally fit if you ascend them up into the floor. Let's do that. Let's see what this unit is. Demon Fiend. Costs four to put them out there. 50 health, 50 damage. Our Steel Worker. Resolve applies armor five to a friendly unit. I guess we'll stick with the Steel Worker. Hellvent. Oh, you know what? The Hellvent duplicates cards. So go with my Sting here. And we'll see what's in the concealed caverns. These are just like events that happen. An arcane machine peeks through the snow, mechanical arms and controls in various states of disrepair. The large harness in the center looks to have held something vaguely familiar, but you can't place what. Near the opening of the train, a metal control board stands relatively untouched, clean, even strange. When you move towards it, the board whirs to life and a single button with the diamond icon flashes at you. Build a card. The machine moans in response, additional prompts appearing on the control panel. A row of levers rise in the metal board, each one adorned with symbols you can only assume refer to various elemental effects. Armor, spikes, or sap. We kind of already have like a spike thing going on. Let's do that. A row of levers rise in the metal board to various health related effects. Damage effect, a heal up effect, or a buff effect. I like the idea of putting spikes on myself and healing myself. Do the heal. Small rod rises from a space between the boards. It can be moved in four directions. So one direction is blocked entirely. Create a push, de descend, or ascend effect. We already have an ascend effect. 
Um, but I don't, if it, is it gonna ascend the enemy? Is it gonna ascend my unit? I don't understand fully what that's gonna do because I wouldn't wanna put spikes on somebody that I ascend upwards because it puts them in the back. Well, let's try it anyways, see what happens. You take the orb, apply spikes five, restore 20 health and ascend the unit. Oops. I guess we'll try it. That's a weird one. Boss time. Evan's disgraced professor has improved his explosive inventions, creating better protection through technological enhancements. So he put that bomb behind the enemy units on the bottom. He's dealing 20 damage. Yeah, no. I'm gonna put my sentient on the top, I guess. Put my steel worker in the middle. Put a train steward in front of him, maybe? Get our animus up on the top. Maybe start torching some of these dudes. Maybe these guys are better to torch here. What I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna send this guy, shove him in the back. So you'll notice the capacity meter is now gone one over what it should be. That's because that ascend card allows me to break that. Detonation, heal him and do damage to the other guy. Nice. Also torch that bomb. Sweet. Gotta worry about that bomb on top. Now 15 damage to my sentient is not good. What happens if I try to use this old magic to ascend a unit that's already on the top? Can't move. That's great. Final wave time. Let's ascend this guy. Shove him in there. Been getting tons of armor from my steel worker since I shoved him in there. I mean, my front two units have 20 armor each. And done to fight the boss. The boss will die. I don't have to touch anything else, but I will. All right, let's watch it happen. Done. Us Kermit gains sweep, which means it hits every single enemy unit on the entire floor. That's really good. Let's grab him. And let's use our ascend cards to shove him up behind my champion. After a major boss, we also get to upgrade our train. Either one extra energy, one extra card drawn per turn, or one extra capacity. We're bypassing capacity already. So let's do the one extra energy. What do you got? Thorned Hollow or Awoken Hollow. Basically, if I heal Thorned Hollow, he gains spikes. If I heal the Awoken Hollow, he rejuvenates or cultivates rather too. I kind of like the spiked guy. We'll put him on a different floor and leave him there. Merchant of Magic, let's upgrade some of our magic cards. Make a spell cost less. We could say Ascend costs zero. Rest Restoration Detonation costs zero. Make this new card that I got, the 10 health and spikes three. Let's make that cost less. Three is just too much. Plus 10 magical power. I like the restoration detonation, deal, uh, healing twice as much, and then dealing five times that extra amount. It's really good. Upgrade a spell to gain holdover. Let's do a sting with a holdover. Get a chance to upgrade our champion after the major bosses. Revenge cultivate two instead of cultivate one. Or spikes 10. I'm gonna go cultivate two. Send it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Animus behind our champion apply 10 health and spikes three. Oh, it's 10 extra health i didn't see that part i thought it was healing them for 10 it just literally gives them 10 more hp let's go ahead and put the husk kermit in there Deals five damage sweep so it's gonna kill the person in the back and that's guard it with our thorned hollow See, now it just gained three spikes because it has rejuvenation spikes three restoration detonation heal 20 Deal five times that to the front enemy unit. Shazam, dead. Doing well. Top guy's dead. Middle guy is almost is dead. Because we've been cultivating our animus of will, it's up to 13 damage times three. That's huge. Boss should be coming in right about now. There it is. Slay. Triggers after dealing a killing blow. Adds a self-mutilation card to the... Oh, it doesn't matter. It's dead. <laughs> it's gonna die. Just to continue to rub it into the dude's face. I've healed my bottom guy so much, it has 36 spikes. Anybody attacking it gets 36 damage back. The Thought Binder is screwed. And go. dead and our bonus artifact is pyre gains 15 damage so instead of 30 damage every time the pyre hits something 
45. This is a tricky one. Focused growth. Restore 25 health and draw two extra cards next turn. Wildwood Tome. Apply quick to uh, one of my units. So they attack before the enemies. Or restoring retreat. Restore 10 health and descend a unit. I'm going to go with quick here. Putting that on my sweep could be a game changer. Or the Animus of Will. Upgrade a unit with quick permanently. Let's do that on the Husk Kermit. Upgrade a unit with plus 10 damage. Animus of starting at 13 times 3 is crazy. And 25 extra health. Put that on the Thorned Hollow. That was delicious. Next wave, let's go. We got enemy units with sweep coming in now. So they're going to be attacking every single unit of mine. So wait a minute. Oh, crap. Okay. Animus is in trouble here. Animus is going to die already because of the fact that Master of Light has a sweep attack. Dealing three damage. I have three health. Crap. Animus is dead. There goes that freaking plan. Shoot! <laughs> yeah, dead. That's That was my powerhouse right there. I'll put my sweep attack dude in there. I'll send this guy to make everyone have more armor. Gonna let all these guys slip through on the top. Not really much I can do about it, though. So first enemy units that have gotten to the top. Dead. I think actually somebody did slip up last time. They had no, zero attack though. More damage. We do have a lot of attack on our pyre though. It's pretty impressive. And with spikes alone, my thorned hollow will deal 228 damage to the boss. Let's see if we can't bump that up. The rookie numbers. Two, 327. We got him. Look at that. Go. Got him. Engraft, restore one health, gain one energy, draw one next turn. That's really good. I like it. Large stone, upgrade a unit with plus one capacity, plus 15 attack, and plus 40 health. <laughs> Could put that on my Animus, and my Animus probably wouldn't die next time. 28 damage times three. Another major boss. Arcus, Darkness Incarnate. Arcus will summon Blinding Dark Shard and Shattering Dark Shard. I don't know what those do until I can read them. Summoned Blinding Dark Shard. Apply Dazed to my units whenever I play a unit card on the floor. What's this? Shattering Dark Shard. When one of my units dies, it adds a Weights of Contrition card, which is one of these. Costs one to get rid of. And I'm going to get rid of it. We're crushing it. This guy's up to 24 spikes already. Final wave. 63 health, 20 damage. We practically had this guy full health. We do. We officially got him to full health. 145 full health, 57 spikes. Doesn't even need the healing anymore. And our boss is already dead. More spikes. Go. Done. Got to 84 spikes by the end of that. Channel song. Draw a unit and apply 20 extra damage, 20 extra health, and it make it cost zero. That's hard to pass up. They don't even need the energy, but sure. Blights and Scourges cost zero artifacts, so I'll never have to pay to get rid of them. That sounds pretty good. Let's go with the Sinner Sav. Upgrade our champion. Cultivating three. Let's do it. 160 max HP. Non-boss enemy units restore all health when they move up a floor. Bring it. 400 extra gold if I can do it. Oh, that's going to be actually kind of difficult, probably. I'm going to do something unique this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sentient on the middle floor and put the horned guy on the top. I want my sentient to take more damage is the problem here. Horned hollow up top. So, once again, if I can't kill him, I'm doing 93 damage to him. If I just did the 93 and I let him go to the next floor, he will heal right back to 130. Kind of a big deal to get him right now. Something that I could do this moment though, is I could put my Husk Hermit down and then ascend it and try to do more damage. It's still only up to 94 now. Guess we're not going to be able to kill that guy. This is the main problem. 
this is my fault. We're also upgrading the wrong unit. We're cultivating the wrong one. I want to be cultivating my Animus of Will. Instead, we're cultivating the Husk Hermit because it's weaker. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have done that, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send the Husk again to get him out of there. Only gonna take 45 damage, though. Once again, so it's going to heal himself, and he's going to go full force on my pyre. Oh my god, don't tell me I'm going to get him down to 112, and he's going to take 111 damage. Some kind of sick joke. Yeah. He's going to sneak through with one health. Okay, ouch. Can't kill him. I can't kill anybody right now. He's walking through. Thank God we have 55 attack on our pyre. Channel song. I placed all my units without even thinking about the channel song. Which unit do we have left? Is it the imp? It's it's the imp, isn't it? Oh my God. The imp has got 21 damage. Go imp. Impress me. Restoration detonation. Kill that mutter. Get him. You almost got him. You're so close. You're so, 67 with 66 damage? <laughs> it did it again. There we go. There we go. Add it onto the spikes. Final box. What's your specialty? Trample. When attacking, excess damage is applied to the subsequent enemy unit. Also gaining multi-strike from the multi-strike enchanter behind him. Let's take out that multi-strike guy. Let's get our buddy out of there so it doesn't die. Maybe restore our sentient. All right, let's see what happens. Boss is gonna be dead. We got him. Let's see it. I think this is the way to go. Putting our sentient on the middle floor. Oh, this worked out really, really well. Our animus got up to 61 times three attack. Last upgrade round before the final, final boss. Probably should look at the trinket merchant first. When you summon the second unit during a turn, gain three energy. That's pretty good. <laughs> at the start of your turn, add a vine grasp spell with purge to your hand. I'm gonna go with the cursed vines. <laughs> what would I duplicate if I could duplicate any single card? Double my channel song. Final battle, go. The first spell card played each turn gets consume. So we're gonna lose the first spell card. That sucks. Also start with three vengeful shards. But remember I can play these for free now because of my artifact. Get rid of them, easy enough. Fine grass. Six damage and move an enemy to the front. Let's just maybe just try to kill some people with it. Here's a tricky one. Do we want to play our Animus of Will right now, potentially start upgrading it, or do we want to try to get it with Channel Song? If I don't put him out, it'll be a first target for Channel Song. That sounds like a better idea to me. There's still three available for it to choose from. We don't know if we're going to get the right one. Ooh, let's hope we do. Let's use it. No, not the freaking Imp, you frick. That is absolutely worst case scenario. First guy slept through. A little bit of damage there. Let's not forget that my fledgling imp has uh, endless on it, so I can just keep sticking him in there. Channel song. One available unit. Which one could it be? I wonder. 48 times three damage starting off with, though. That's hot. That's really hot. Final wave. Here we are. My animus is dealing 60 times three damage. This dude's dying on the first floor. This first floor was an absolute joke. It was a mistake. You know what? Actually, let's get uh, let's get this guy out of there. Let's shove him in there. We haven't been doing the ascend thing that we talked about. Sorry, fledgling. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're gonna die now. Final boss deals nine times three damage. Has 900 health right now. And the final boss is already dead. Didn't even make it to the top floor. My animus took it out. Pretty saucy. Go. Let's see it. Done. Awesome stuff. We win. That was the final battle. 
We made it to the frozen heart, reigniting the fires of hell. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Thank you once again to Good Shepherd Entertainment for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget that Monster Train First Class is out right now on the Switch. So follow the link in the description if you guys want to check it out yourself. Also important to remember that Monster Train First Class encompasses everything that Monster Train on PC has right now. Awesome stuff. Can't wait to play this more. And I will see you in the next episode. See you guys.